before carrying out repair and maintenance work, set the parking brake, shut off the engine, and remove the key. Always refer to the operator manual for maintenance information. A complete maintenance interval chart is listed in the operator's manual and is also available on a decal on the inside of the chassis access cover between the left drive tires and power module. Refer to the operator's manual for fluid and lubricant recommendations if required. Keep track of operating hours to assure periodic maintenance is performed properly and on a timely basis. Use the cleaning guide as a checklist to become familiar with the following 12-hour or daily maintenance checks. Check the pressure gauges on both fire extinguishers and confirm they are in the green band. Test the auxiliary water system spray nozzle and check the onboard water tank level to confirm a minimum of 190 liters or 50 gallons of solution. Inspect tires and check pressure. Front dual tires should be inflated to 207 kPa or 30 psi. Rear guide tires should be inflated to 324 kPa or 47 psi. Lubricate the guide axle upper and lower kingpin grease fittings. Before starting the engine, check the engine oil level. The level should be within the crosshatch area on the dipstick. At ambient temperature, fluid levels should be at the midpoint on sight glass gauges. Sight gauges are used for the hydraulic reservoir located on the front side of the power module, the pump drive gearbox viewed from the door on the left end of the power module, and the transmission fluid level on the rear side of the transmission. 50 hour maintenance. When in the RMB service configuration, lubricate the grease fittings on the four gate link pivot bushings. When in the transport configuration, lubricate the grease fittings on the top of the module builder rock shaft bearings. While in the transport configuration, inspect the cotton feeder belt for damage and even tracking from side to side. Check the primary fuel strainer and water separator. Drain any visible water from the bottom of the separator bowl. Remove and clean the cab fresh air filter element if the machine is operated in normal harvest conditions. Clean more often in extremely dirty conditions. Check the spring length gauge on the cleaner drive belt tension adjustment. The end of the gauge should be flush with the edge of the spring washer. Check the spring length gauge on the header drive belt tension adjustment. The end of the gauge should be flush with the edge of the spring washer. 100 hour maintenance. Lubricate the two grease fittings on the header lift rock shaft pivots. Lubricate the cleaner shaft bearings. The three left side bearings are lubricated at the remote grease fittings at the front corner of the cleaner. The right side bearings are lubricated at the fittings on the upper and lower saw drum shafts and the doffer shaft. Lubricate the final drive axle shaft coupler on both inner and outer ends of the right and left drive shafts. Lubricate the outer axle bearings on both final drives. Pump grease into the fittings until grease is visibly being forced past the axle seal. Wipe excess grease from the external seal area before operation. Lubricate the guide axle pivot shaft at the grease fitting on the rear end of the shaft. Lubricate fittings on each end of both guide axle tie rods. Tighten drive axle wheel bolts and powered guide wheel bolts to the specified torque of 610 newton meters or 450 pound feet. Check the wrap floor belt tension. Belt should deflect from 25 to 32 millimeters or 1 to 1 and a quarter inch with moderate force applied in the center of the lower strand. Most important is that tension is even across all belts. 
When in the transport configuration, check the laydown roller drive chain tension and condition at the right end of the roller. Lubricate the chain with a good quality chain lube. For more detailed information, refer to the operator's manual.